Okay, howdy everyone. Today I'm going to show you how how to put together a four-stroke motorized bicycle. Uh, you're going to want to choose a beach cruiser. For the most part, that will allow you to install, the, you'll have enough room to install the, the motor here. Uh, you pretty much will need a 10 inch by 10 inch. 10 inches tall, 10 inches uh, front to back space in order to mount the the motor, uh, even with your uh, your beach cruiser here, this having plenty of room here, it's still a tight fit in order to, to get it in. Your your choke lever will uh, will give you some problems here. Now measuring it, it's about ten and ten and a half inches from the air filter to the front, and from the top of the mounting plate to the top of the motor. We're at about nine and a half inches tall. So from the bottom of your motor mount to the top of the motor, you're about ten and a quarter inches. So you'll need to check your bike for room, but most standard beach cruisers, these four stroke kits, will fit on and fit on just fine. Uh, watch the video. If you got any questions, put them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, here is the four-stroke motor. I will go through all the components in the kit. You've got your star here, the four-stroke Hushang 49cc motor. Out of the box, I would check and make sure that the uh, the choke lever uh, didn't get broke in shipment. I've had a few of them get broken in shipment here. Uh, very important, this motor does not have uh, the proper amount of oil in it. So you will need to uh, fill it up with oil. You have the black plug here on the side that you will remove when your motor is level. You will fill it with uh, 30 weight detergent oil. Fill it up to where it's almost uh, coming out. Uh, be sure and do that before you crank the motor up. Inside your kit you will have your motor mounting plate. You have the four mounting holes here on the bottom of the motor. They will mount to the silver plate. You have the two cast black pieces which mount to the frame. You will remove the the nuts here and uh, put the plates over the uh, the frame members. We will have to do some grinding on the motor mount to get it to fit properly. Inside your kit when you unpack it you will have your transmission mounting bracket here. The larger opening mounts to the motor. The smaller mount is where your reduction gear will mount. You then have your sprocket which goes to, to, to your, your drive chain. We're going to take a file and dress up the teeth on the sprocket. These teeth are very square and they're very sharp. They did not deburr these well enough in the factory for the chain to, uh, to, to run properly. So uh, make note we will need to uh, take care of that. Here is your clutch, your bag with the clutch. Be very careful taking it out. There is a little bitty key, shaft key that's in there. You don't want to lose that. You also will have the mounting Allen screw as well your oil light bushing and the the end piece here that holds the uh, that, that holds everything together I would recommend that you soak this piece here this uh, bronze bushing in oil before you uh, mount it on the bike that'll help lube it up here and here is your clutch you want to make uh, make note as to which way uh, when you put the clutch on, I'll show you when we get to the assembly, the clutch only goes on one way. Uh, if you put it on one way, the clutch will be too far out. If you put it on the wrong way, the clutch will be too far out and your clutch belt won't go on properly. So you'll have to make note of that. You've got your 415 chain with a master link on it. You have your throttle assembly. 
here with the uh, the kill switch wire I'm going to uh, just go ahead and cut the wire and take it off remove the switch all together we have our uh, our left side grip here you have your sprocket mounting hardware what's called the rag joint and all of the hardware that comes with it you also have your fuel line your fuel pet cock and your gas tank mounting bracket here. We have our chain tensioner here which will mount on the rear uh, chain stay. We have our transmission hardware here that we use to mount the transmission and the transmission cover. You have your throttle cable. You have your extra wide crank arms with the chain ring. Here you will need your three piece when you order your kit, you need to make sure that you do get the three-piece bracket set with the kit, and particularly if, if you're buying from, uh, depending upon the vendor you're buying from, they don't always include it. And of course, you've got your transmission cover that covers up all the gears and the like. You have your 44-tooth sprocket, and you have your transmission belt. So now that we've got all of our parts sorted out, we know that everything's there, we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and get started on the bike. Okay, so first things first, here's the frame we're gonna be mounting it on here. I went ahead and removed the, uh, the rear wheels. I'm gonna use some different wheels and what came with the bike. Uh, the chain guard, I recommend pitch it, particularly here on the four stroke. The motor mount, the way the motor mount will mount on this here in order to give you enough room to put the four stroke on, um, the stock chain ring here, the sprocket here, the crank, is a little too tall for it. You need to, to get this down a good bit here in order to uh, have enough room to put the motor in. Uh, it doesn't matter because we're going to replace it. The kit comes with a smaller sprocket as well as a three-piece adapter kit here because these crank arms here are going to be too narrow. They'll, they'll hit the motor here. The motor's too wide. So we're going to need to remove the, the crank here. As well, you're going to have to take a, a link or two out of your chain in the process. As well, the bracket that comes with your kit the way this mates against the seat tube, the back one is going to be aimed down and the top one is going to be aimed up. So you're going to have something, I'm exaggerating, but the, the front one is going to be up and the back one is going to be down. So what we're going to have to do here, we're going to have to grind the back part, the top part here of the back one in order to get the angle we need. And then we're going to have to grind the the bottom one in order to get the front one to get them to come in a, the proper alignment so we can mount the silver plate on we'll get more into detail on that here in just a minute okay like i said we're going to have to take the uh the crank here off you've got your locking nut you've got a, a washer and then you have the uh, the bearing race here on the inside This here has reverse threads, so you're going to turn it clockwise. Damn! You turn it clockwise to loosen it. One of the few instances where I've seen actually almost enough grease on the bearing, brand new. We're going to reuse that bearing. And here's your bottom bracket here. You've got the shaft here. The shaft has a stop here. We're going to put the stop on the right hand side. That's where your, your chain ring, the sprocket, will go here. So we want that on the right hand side. Reverse threads on both parts here. And 
You want to get this snug enough to where you don't have any play, to where you don't have any travel right to left, up and down of the shaft. And give it just a little bit of a, a snug to tighten it up. We're good to go there. As well, I'll tighten up the other side here. But I'm not going to bore you with that. You have a slot cut into the threads here. This washer has a slot on it, or has a tab on it, which goes into the slot. So we're going to slide this on. As well, that's going to go into the, uh, the recess here. Let's go ahead and get a drop of our thread locking compound here. Put our jam nut on. Reverse threads. operation make sure it moves smoothly we're good to go and later we'll put the crank arms on here but I'll just I'll leave the uh, the crank arms off while I'm messing with mounting the motor and the like that'll give me uh, better access to the motor